Good day buddies, I'm glad to have you here on this simple modification video. One of my first few purchases of ant keeping stuffs before, was some of this full acrylic vertical nest ant farms. Which is pretty useless to be honest. Except for the art world that comes with it. I've tried to keep a lot of ants, of different species using this. But even the healthiest, and thriving colonies will slowly start to fail once moved here. So after so many years, and countless tries, I finally decided to modify it, in an attempt to make it work for my ant colonies. Anyway, welcome back buddies. And for those new to the channel, you're all also to D Colony. I just detached it from its outworld. We're also removing the cover for now. The back is open, since this vertical nest was screwed on one side of the outworld. We'll be drilling some holes for ventilation, and entrance on the side. Which I'm hesitant at first, cause the acrylic plates might crack on the process. But luckily, we pulled it off. I will also make some additional vent holes on the cover, since the Tetramurium colony that will live here is a dryness loving species. I will be using a mixture of grout and plaster, to cover the base and all around the sides. To be able to do it, we will need a mold for the media. Let's make one using Sintra boards. Masking tapes to hold it temporarily. And hot glue to make it more sturdy, while the grout is drying. I'm adding additional nuts on each bolts, to hold the acrylic and solid grout together. We're also blocking the holes we drilled on the sides. And we'll just position it like this. But before we continue pouring the mixture, let me fill this part first. Cause this part will be covered under the sponge, so filling up this part first will avoid blind spots inside the nest. Then, let's do the base next. I'll fill it up until it reaches the second layer of acrylic. And finally, the corners. Then removed some unwanted grout stains. I'll let it dry for several days, before trying to loosen the screws, to make sure to avoid breaking, or losing the hold of the nuts to the grout. Unfortunately, we got some unfilled parts. Which doesn't look good, but I guess that's fine, since they're not too deep, and we got the entrance, and vent, slash expansion port perfectly. Let's set the sponge now for the hydration, before we forget. Then let's get this covered. Anyway, I also made additional ventilation holes on the cover, for the second, and third chamber of the nest. Let's try the nest dividers, which is the best feature of these ant farm. Still works fine, I guessed. Anyway, this dividers will prevent the colony to use too much space. Let's hydrate it before finally introducing the colony. The colony that will move to our modified formicarium is this one. 
my two years old tetramorium colony, who's currently living on this mini DIY nests, that we made on the channel a while back. They've already outgrown the setup, so on their last update we introduce them to this spacious new nest. This nest, or ant farm is also a good example of a failure. Which I believe mainly on humidity issues. Cause colonies that had been moved here, are all gone bad. That's why I will also do a modification on these setups, soon. This ant colony is the last one that I've tried to move here. But as I expected, they refused to move a single brood. Even though their two nests had been fully occupied, considering tetramoriums is so hardy, and can nest on most places, or ant farms, they made this as a garbage site instead. Maybe this nest deserves it, cause the ants will be the best one to review a formicarium, after all. A great sign that this is not a suitable ant farm for them to live is they choose to stay on the tubing with their broods. A tubing that is exposed to light all day. We also have a huge die off, recently. I'm hoping it's not because of the nest that we have introduced in the last update. Anyway, I put this roach on the top of the liquid feeder to clear the ants inside, before putting it on the trash. Cause this ants buddies loves to chill on the insects carcasses. Anyway, the plan is to disconnect this two here, and connect the new nest to the T-joint directly. Of course, the workers immediately find the new nesting space. They've been so busy looking for expansion for almost a month now, so this must be a dream come true for them. And for me as well, cause I really want to have a clear look, inside their nest again. Since they love their grout, and plaster nest, I decided to use it on modifying their new setup. What do you think buddies? How long will it take for the colony to migrate, or if they will move in? Comment down below, while I'm busy manually transferring the workers left on the disconnected part of their old setup. Luckily this ants doesn't bite, or stings. So moving them like this is so easy, they will just play dead once you've touched them. They're pretty armored too, so picking them up with, bare fingers isn't that bad for them as well. So this is the latest happening on this colony buddies, I'll update you soon on how this migration goes. I just hope you have learned something from this video guys. Be a genie for the first time, by granting my wish and tapping the like and share button, that would help a lot. This is D Colony, saying goodbye. For now. But hoping to see you on my next videos.